In this video, I will be um, showing you how to add fractions, especially fractions with different denominators. So when you're adding fractions, there are steps. And the first one would be to make the denominators the same if they have different denominators. So for example, you have 1 half plus 1 third. You have to make their denominators the same so it's easier to add them. Now how do you do that? Well, you have to find the LCD. I'm not going to get into the details on how to find the LCD, but I do have a video on how to find the LCD. It's a very short video and it will be very, very helpful if that is something that you need help with. So LCD basically means the least common multiple of the two denominators of the fractions that you are trying to add. So here the denominators are 2 and 3. You can find the LCD by finding the least common multiple of the two numbers. You can do that by first listing multiples of 2, which are 2, 4, 6, and so on. Multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, and so on. These are numbers that you say when you count by 3s and when you count by 4s. Now notice that the smallest of all the multiples that are common to both numbers is 6. So that means you can express 1 half as a fraction with a denominator of 6 and add that to a fraction that's equivalent to 1 third but with a denominator of 6. Well, what does that actually mean? What does that look like? And why do I have to do that? Like I said earlier, it's easier to add fractions when they are made out of, um, when they have the same denominators. So what that means is like it's easier to add fractions when they're made out of unit fractions of the same size. Like one half is a unit fraction, one third is a unit fraction, but they're unit fractions of different sizes. I want to use fractions with, or unit fractions with the same size. Now I can do that by expressing these two fractions into fractions with the same denominator. Like since six is their common denominator, that means I can express one half as set to one sixth By using the tiles, I can figure out how many 1 sixth I need to make 1 half. You can see I need 3 pieces of 1 sixth, which means 3 sixths. So, this is 3 sixths, and that is at 1 half. Okay? That's no different, using the tiles is no different than when you're actually trying to multiply both the numerator and denominator of 1 half by. 1, 2, 3 by 3. So you have 3 over 6. And then I can express 1 third as set to 1 sixth also. And I need 2 of those to make 1 third. So that means 1 third is the same thing as 2 sixths. Two pieces of one sixth means two sixths. Okay. So again, why find the LCD? The whole point of that is to express the two original fractions into fractions with the same denominators. And when fractions have the same denominators, that means they are made up of unit fractions of same size, like expressing one half into groups of one sixth, and expressing one third into also groups of one sixth. Okay. Because it's easier to add all of these one sixth than actually adding one half and one third. Because see, when you say one half plus one third, you're basically wanting to know if I combine these two, how big do I have? What fraction of a whole do I have? I know it's smaller than one whole, but it's hard to tell exactly how big that is. But it's easier to tell how big that is if you actually express them into sets of unit fractions of same sizes. Now all you got to do is add all of these 1 sixth. So 3 sixth means 3 pieces of 1 sixth plus 2 sixth, which means 2 pieces of 1 sixth, would mean you have 5 pieces of 1 sixth, which is equal to 5 sixth. Okay? Now when I change 1 third into 2 sixth, that's really no different than changing the denominator of 1 third 
into 6, which means multiplying 3 by 1, 2. And multiplying 1 by 2 also. Okay? So what I'm basically saying here is that 1 half is equivalent to 3 sixths, 1 third is equivalent to 2 sixths. So since it's easier to add 3 sixths and 2 sixths rather than 1 half and 1 third, I will want to express 1 half and 1 third into 3 sixths and 2 sixths so that I know I have 5 sixths altogether. Now, let's use this um, idea or this information, this new knowledge, into adding more unfamiliar fractions. Okay. Now, 1 6 is still pretty familiar, but I'm going to add it to 5 24 Okay, if I add it to 5 24 okay, it would be easier for me to know how big the sum is if I can express 1 6 and 5 24 into unit fractions of same sizes. Okay, and I can figure out what those unit fractions are by finding the LCD, which means the least common multiple of the denominators, 6 and 24. I know that the multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, and so on, and the multiples of 24 and 24, 48, and so on. I can use 24 since 24 is the smallest number among all the common multiples of 6 and 24. Okay? So that means I would have to multiply 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4. And since I want a fraction that's equivalent to 1 6, I would also have to multiply its numerator by 4. So now I have 4 6, or 4 24 it's rather which means that 1 sixth can be expressed as 4 pieces of 1 24th, okay? I don't need to do anything to 5 24th since it's already a fraction whose denominator is 24, okay? So I have 4 24ths, which means I have 4 pieces of 1 24th tiles, okay? Plus 5 24ths, which means adding 5 pieces of 1 24th tiles. So how many 1 24th tiles do I have all together? I have 9 24th, which means I have 9 pieces of 1 24th. So here, I use the tiles 1 24th, okay? So 9 24th. Now 9 24th is not a fully simplified fraction. So we can still do something to it to simplify, and it's very important that you read the instruction when you're doing an assessment to know whether you have to simplify the fraction or not. Now, to simplify a fraction is basically just expressing the fraction into its equivalent, wherein the numerator and the denominator okay, only has one common factor of 1. Okay? How do I do that? Well, I have to think about a number that I can use to divide both 9 and 24. Okay? It has to be the biggest factor that's common to both 9 and 24. So I'm thinking, how about divided by 3? If I divide by 3, I'll end up with 3 over 8. Well, 3 and 8 okay, don't have a common factor other than 1. So 3 eighths is already simplified. One of these days, I promise you, I'm going to make a, um, a video on how to simplify fractions. I hope this helps, and good luck.